Are you searching for a new job? Here's how much you should spend on travel, attire, and education. Hello, I'm Bobby Lee, and this is a Money Crashers Crash Course on how much you should spend on job searches. It may be counterintuitive, but it does take money to make money. Finding a job, buying clothing for interviews, and traveling to the company for a visit can suck up a lot of your cash. It's a hard pill to swallow, especially if you're unemployed. Here's how much you'll be spending on the most common expenses when searching for a job. Transportation costs. By car, by public transport, or by plane, getting to a job interview can be burdensome on your wallet. If you own a car, there's the cost of the vehicle, gas, insurance, and other considerations. If you don't own your own car, you may have to rent one. A single-day economy car may rent for as little as $20 to $30 if you book in advance through a budget travel site. But prices can reach above $100 daily if you're not careful. Either way, don't forget parking costs. In a city where street parking is tough to come by, such as New York City, garage parking Parking can cost anywhere from $25 to $40 for just a few hours. If you can snag a street spot in New York City, meter parking costs from $1 to $3.50 per an hour, which for a three-hour interview is significantly cheaper than paying for a garage. Just be sure to give yourself ample time to search for a spot. In many cities, taxis and rideshare may also be an option. Although taxis have a fixed price structure, ridesharing is subject to surge pricing or a higher cost during periods of high demand. Either way, give yourself plenty of time to account for traffic or delays in finding a driver. If you're in a metropolitan city, public transportation may be a viable option. For example, in New York City, the cost of a single subway ride is $3, while a 30-day unlimited pass runs $116.50. If you're interviewing out of town, you'll also need to factor in the cost of a plane ticket, hotel, and ground transportation. If these kinds of costs are out of the question, think about remote interviews via Skype. This may be great for first or second round interviews, but any more interviews after that will probably require you to show up in person. Attire costs. You have to look nice for an interview. Here's what you'll probably be spending money on. Business suits. These typically cost between $100 and $200, though it's possible to spend much more as designer suits retail for well over $1,000. Collared shirts. Collared shirts for both men and women can cost anywhere from $30 to over $100. Ties. A tie typically costs $15 to $50 or more. You can easily get away with buying one or two business suits and rotating different shirts or ties underneath. However, keep in mind that many business suits require dry cleaning, which can add to your expenses, typically 25 to 50 bucks, depending on the clothing material and where you live. You don't necessarily need to dry clean a suit each time you wear it, but expect to have yours cleaned after four or five wears. Outlet centers, consignment stores, and secondhand stores are great places to find new or used business suits in good condition for very little money. Sites like eBay and Craigslist may be viable, but be careful. Signs of wear and tear, such as rips, holes, or frayed hems, are not always visible in photos. If you're a low-income individual, there are also nonprofit organizations that offer free formal wear. If you have a friend willing to lend you a suit while you're in the process of interviewing, accept graciously. Just remember, if the job requires professional dress, it might pay to buy your own clothing from the start. Telecommunications. Needless to say, you need to be plugged in these days to find most jobs. The worst feeling is losing out on a job because you couldn't respond to an email fast enough. If you don't own a smartphone, put that at the top of your list. Phones cost anywhere from $100 to $800 or more if purchased new, much lower if purchased used on various sites like eBay. Service can run you anywhere from nothing or $20 a month and up from there depending on your internet usage. Education. If you're having trouble landing a job, brushing up on various skills may be helpful. For example, if you're looking for a finance job, take a look at a Microsoft Excel refresher course. There are educational sites like GoSkills.com that offer courses for $100 or less. You may also want to look into free online courses at places like CodeAcademy.com. Also, community college might be a good balance between cost and skill building as well. Regardless, make sure you can use these courses for continuing education credits or towards a certificate to make your learning work for you. Computer Equipment and Internet Services 
These days, most jobs are found on internet job sites like Indeed, Monster, and CareerBuilder. But if you're using an out-of-date computer that's slow or prone to crashes, or if you don't have a working computer in the first place, you're going to face serious challenges. The good news is technology keeps getting more affordable. For as little as $150 to $500, you can purchase a new laptop to create resumes and cover letters and to search for jobs online, provided that you have an internet connection. If you don't, expect to pay anywhere from $15 to $40 bucks a month, depending on your carrier. Though you may be able to save money by bundling your phone and cable packages together. A printer and scanner or fax machine may also be a wise investment, as some companies may require you to sign and return documents via email or fax during the interview process. You can purchase a new fax printer scanner machine combination for as little as $100. However, used computer equipment can be significantly lower in price. Check out sites like eBay or Craigslist or see if anyone is holding a garage sale in your area. You can also save money by printing and faxing documents at your local Staples or FedEx office where you can pay just a few dollars to deal with the occasional contract. Resume You may not be a great writer, have never constructed a resume before, or need help showing your work history in a more positive light. That's where resume services like ResumeEdge.com come in. A professional resume writer can tell you what needs to be on your resume and what you're better off leaving out. A resume writer can also help you describe your experience in a compact, professional manner. You can also find additional resume services by searching online or asking a recruiter for a recommendation. The only downside to a resume service is the cost. Whether you find a writer who charges per an hour or per job, you're probably looking at spending $100 to $500 for a revised, completed resume. On the plus side, a polished, professional resume could help you find a job more quickly, thus cutting your job search short and saving you money. If you can't afford a resume service, try asking a friend who's a writer to help you with a resume as a favor, just offer to provide a service in return. Or if you're a college graduate having trouble finding work, it pays to reach out to your school's career center for resume help. It may extend that help and its services at no charge. Career Counseling Career counselors or coaches work with all types of job seekers, from those straight out of college to seasoned professionals looking for guidance. If you're having trouble getting interviews or you find yourself constantly interviewing for jobs that just aren't right for you, it might pay to seek outside help. A career coach can help you to identify your talents, market yourself to employers, and establish a career path that's aligned with your strengths and goals. While career counseling can be extremely effective in helping you to find a job, it can also be pricey. Many career counselors charge $100 to $300 an hour or more. The number of hours you need ultimately depends on your specific circumstances, but it's best to assume that two to three hours are required to make any real progress. But think about it this way. If a career counselor helps you to land the right job, you save money by wrapping up your job search sooner than you would have on your own. Now, you may be able to find a career counselor who charges a flat fee as opposed to an hourly rate. For example, some career coaches charge $500 for an all-day session, which may be all you need. This is a far cheaper option than paying $200 per hour for four or five hours worth of time. Also keep in mind that some career coaches offer reduced or sliding scale fees to clients based on income or need. This means that while an established professional might be subject to the going rate, you could also snag a discount as a recent college graduate or former stay-at-home parent looking to return to the workforce. Child care. If you have children who aren't old enough to be in school, or you're asked to attend an interview when school isn't in session, you'll need to arrange for child care. Babysitters typically charge $8 to $15 an hour depending on the number of children that you have and the demands of the job. If your kids are school-aged, a before or after school care program may be offered through the school itself. These typically cost anywhere from $100 to $500 a month. If you're searching for a job aggressively and want to free up most of your daytime hours to look for work, considering enrolling your children in daycare if they're too young to attend school. U.S. daycare centers average $972 per month for infant and toddler care. Home daycare is typically cheaper, averaging $646 a month. Another option for child care is hiring a nanny, which, according to Baby Center, costs an average of $500 to $700 per week. While this may make sense once you're employed, it may not be the most cost-effective or practical option for your job search. Finding a nanny takes time, and unlike babysitters, most vetted qualified nannies want a commitment rather than a month-to-month -month job. By contrast, daycare centers typically charge tuition on a weekly or monthly basis, but don't make you sign a long-term contract. If your intent is to use a nanny once you find a full-time job, you can always put your child in daycare while you look for work, then pull them out once hired. Writing off your job search costs 
While looking for work can be a huge financial undertaking, the good news is that you may be able to score a tax break in the process. Depending on your income and filing circumstances, you may be eligible to write off certain items related to your job search. Resume services. You may be able to deduct the cost of hiring a professional to help you with your resume. Travel expenses. Any driving you do to and from a job interview counts as mileage eligible for deduction. All you need to do is keep a detailed mileage log and calculate the total number of miles you drive for job search purposes, then multiply that number by the standard mileage rate. Similarly, if you take a train, bus, or airplane ride to attend an interview, you can claim that cost as a deduction. The same goes for overnight lodging. Education. You may be able to deduct the cost of any courses you take to make yourself more employable, provided that you're looking for work within your field. Keep in mind that you can only deduct job search costs if they, either on their own or combined with other eligible miscellaneous expenses, exceed 2% of your adjusted gross income. For example, if your adjusted gross income is $50,000 and you have $1,200 in eligible job search expenses for the year, you can deduct that amount because it exceeds the 2% threshold. However, if your job search costs only total $600 and you don't have any additional miscellaneous deductions in which to combine with that, then you can't deduct that $600. Additionally, you can only deduct job search expenses if you're looking for work in your current field or occupation. Recent college graduates looking to join the workforce cannot deduct their job search costs. Bottom line, searching for a job can feel like a job, and it can be a pain in the wallet. But there are ways to make the burden easier until you land the job that you're looking for. Let's review what we discussed today. We started by talking about travel expenses, then we moved on to interview attire expenses. Following that, we talked about mobile phones and data, followed by continuing education costs. Next, we talked about computer equipment and internet service costs, followed by the cost of resume writing services. We wrapped up expenses by covering career counseling and childcare expenses. We then ended the lesson by talking about the deductibility of all of these expenses. For more information about searching for a job, visit our website at moneycrashers.com. I'm Bobby Lee with Money Crashers, and this has been a crash course on all the expenses that you'll incur while searching for a job.